Today I'm going to be painting my giraffe flamingo hybrid. If you haven't seen part one of this video where I sculpt this creature, I'm going to drop a link somewhere up here. I'm going to be using a combination of airbrushing and hand painting techniques. So let's get painting. I'm going to need my mixing palette, brushes, acrylic paints and my beloved airbrush. It would be a lot easier to use alcohol based inks or fluid acrylics, but Apparently I like to make it difficult on myself by mixing my own colours from standard soft body acrylics. I need to water them down in order to be able to run it through my airbrush, but this also dilutes the pigment so I'll need to gradually build up my layers if I want a full coverage. Before we get too far, I want to give a shout out to Jade Velour who came up with a great name for this creature. So going forward, our flamingo giraffe hybrid shall be called a flagraf. So thanks Jade for the wonderful name and for everyone else who commented with their ideas. As I mentioned, I'll be using a combination of airbrushing and hand painting techniques. And now when I've based out the body, I'm going to use a brush to add a bit more contrast and definition to the feathers. And rather than masking out what I've already painted, I'm also painting these dark feathers by hand as they're going to be one block collar. Back on the airbrush, it's time to paint the signature spots of the giraffe, which I'm layering up with pink, yellow and orange. I'm alternating between airbrush dutting and shading and flicking paint spatters of my old chip brush. This technique can also be done with an airbrush, but it's easier with a pache than with my eye water. So I've just gotten used to doing it by hand, where I personally feel like I have more control. But talking about techniques, I really should mention the different types of airbrushes. Without going into too much detail, but of course feel free to ask questions in the comments, there are two types of airbrushes, single action and double action. I'm not talking about specific brands here, just the overall types. With a double action, like I'm using here, I first press down for airflow and then I pull back to release the paint. With a single action, that all happens at the same time. I'm going to seal what I have so far with a clear varnish. It says you can use it indoor, though I wouldn't recommend it unless you have extraction. And don't forget to mask up. Now it's time to slobber all this beautiful work in a thick brown wash making sure it gets into all the little nooks and crannies. After bathing the sculpt in this brown soup, I'm wiping it away from the high points, making sure it doesn't run. In the film industry, we call this an age wash and use it on all the weapons and props to knock it back from that shiny new look that is too unrealistic. In this case, I'm using it to knock back the saturated paint job that I feel has started to look more like a phoenix than a flagraf. Not that anyone really knows what a flagraf looks like, so I could probably get away with it. After this is dry, which I'm speeding up with a little help from my hair dryer, I'm going to add a bit of the Phoenix wipes back in by dry brushing some gold wax onto the dark long feathers. By the way, that's Rocky there in the background, who's either thoughtfully admiring my work or trying to tell me that it's dinner time. And with that said, we better hurry up and get on to the beauty shots. Thanks so much for watching this part 2 of my Flagraf hybrid creation. If you have any new video ideas, please let me know. I read and appreciate every single comment. And hope to see you again for my next creation. Bye!